Welcome to Pilots Pro, show number 39. This is the show where we take you from the area of PC repair to small businesses and networks and servers and all the equipment on the Best Buy shelf that you might not know what it does. This is what the show is all about. So, welcome to the show. My name is Lalo. I'm a, a co-host and here we have Matt Rainey. How you doing, man? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Enjoying the start of the holiday season. Okay. Had a good Thanksgiving. How about you? Good. You know, just full food. I had to go to the gym extra hard this week to burn off all, all those calories. But uh, did, did you do any shopping on Black Friday or Cyber Monday? I uh, No. Well, I, I did buy one thing, which I want to say what it is because somebody might hear. I did okay. buy one item, uh, and that was Saturday. Oh, okay. I was in and out in the store in 10 minutes. Hey. So that was that was my shopping experience. Hey, that was a good day. Because yeah, uh, I, was watch, I was watching football all weekend. Good. Again, Thanksgiving is food, beer, if you drink it, and football. So, yep. so man, so what's the show about today, sir? Well, we got a, we got a, an email which I think is a is a pretty good email from Peter. So, uh, I want to go. There's a few things about that email we I want to go over. So. We can uh, we can start with that email. It's actually in two parts. Okay. Uh, I'll let you read it. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> now this email is a little bit long, so just bear with me. This email is from Peter. Hey Matt, Lalo, and Steve. I have a question for the pros. I need to ask your opinion on a service I performed for my first business client that I had. Let me start by describing his setup, which as is as follows two desktop PCs, a D-Link router, charter cable internet, and a newly configured static IP via the ISP. The business owner requested remote access to his main PC in his store. He wanted a remote desktop to be used for this situation because he had debated between LogMeIn and another program. His main concern was that he wanted to be able to log in via RDP from out of the country which is in Pakistan. He had trouble on the past trips with logging into his bank account by using bank web access and he did, did not want this issue by using a third party program if the site is not accessible outside of the US. So from that paragraph, I, I take it he couldn't, he couldn't access this US based site from Pakistan. My question is about security. I had him obtain a static IP versus a I assume dynamic for the fact that he did not want third party software. So I got him set up with a static IP and I set up port forwarding to a non default RDP port, which is 3389, for security. Nothing else has changed in his network and I had him strengthen his Windows password. My question is Is his network now more at risk for security issues with the changes I have made? Um, then like the rest of the email, he just talks about some other things, but, but Matt, but, but what do you think about that? Well, I, I don't think that he's, a, well, obviously anytime you open any port in a router, you're going to be at some security risk, but I, I see a lot of this where remote access is, is a main issue. Most people are going to need remote access of some kind. Uh, back to their network or their work computers, and I see a lot of people t saying, "Don't use RDP or it's not secure. You're going to put them at risk." And I, I really, I, I don't agree with with that. Um, the The problem is there are ways to secure an RDP connection, but just by default, you may come across some type of um, like a man in the middle attack or, or some kind of attack but there's ways around that and this not forget I think RDP access you have to weigh and I guess you have to make it clear to the customer anything is possible you, you can't say you'll, you'll never get um, hacked into if you have that open but with strong passwords this is a convenience for customers to use RDP. I agree. And a small business, I don't really think they're 
I, I might have a few, um, maybe a couple hundred clients, business clients. RDP is open for almost every single one of them, and we've been doing this for 15 years. I have never, ever had a problem or have somebody hack in because of RDP being open and using RDP access. Right, and I'll have to agree because before LogMeIn became popular, I also opened up a non-default port for remote desktop, and that's what I used. Um, for phase, I used a, a self-sign and a certificate for additional and security, um, but I never was attacked again. I didn't have a small um, the business. Now, if you have a small business, and if you did not have the D-Link router, would you suggest having some type of VPN solution to get back and then at that point I use an RDP it will be slower right but it will be more secure it's gonna be a little slower now this is there's always a trade-off so you can let the client know there is a way to make it more secure by using a VPN connection first but it's a trade-off between convenience cost um, and the hassle so if you, if we have RDP only allowed with a VPN connection. Basically, you don't have to open any ports in your router. Right. Um, the way we do that is, of course, we have a – most of our clients use watch card routers. That has the capability to be the VPN. So they load a client, software client on the computer. That connects a VPN back to the network through the watch card. And at that point, they can RDP with a private IP address. Now, this, is, of course, is more – it's more steps. Some people don't want to take that many steps. They just want to click the RDP icon and go. Right. So it's it really gets down to educating the customer of the choices, and it's it's there it's there, whatever their risk assessment is. It, it, do I think this is enough risk to go through the extra steps and cost for doing a VPN connection? And that's it's up to them. I've seen some clients if. Is a problem on the road, but some clients have RDP access only through VPN. Some have v RDP access only allowed from certain IPs. So their house, if they have a static IP, they may only allow RDP access through that IP address. Now, what you're talking about there is only available toward the middle to high end the routers. Right in the email, he described a D link off the shelf. I'm yeah. not sure that will have that functionality, right? No, that's not going to have that. So yeah, the other routers, that's one feature of a more of a business class router. You can say, I want to allow whatever port you designate for RDP from only certain IP addresses. So you can put in the public IPs that you want to allow access, and that's who gets access. You don't have that kind of filtering with the um, consumer grade routers. Right. So... RDP. Now there there is ways. Now he's connecting to his computer, and he doesn't exactly say what the operating system is. Like Windows right. Seven, there's there's options in there to where you have you can only allow the later RDP clients to access it. Um, and it does have some. I think it's 128 bit encryption for the newer versions of RDP. So you, you do have some encryption. Um, right. And I guess. Is it secure on paper? I guess technically no, but it's not that easy to intercept like, the traffic. Now, there are the videos. I mean, it can be done. I, but, so don't get me wrong here, but I've used it before. Matt does use it, um, or he said he, he also agrees. Now, there are things that you could do to kind of help the a situation as you said if you're using Windows 7 128 bit encryption um, you can rename the administrator account using strong the passwords and all the admin type accounts you can use auditing like, if you want so you can see when folks are logging in or off and you can also set a policy for a lockout if you mistype a password three four or five times then it locks, it locks you out to kind of not prevent, but for those brute force attacks. Um, so, I mean, there are things that Matt's saying that you can do to help the situation. Right. Anytime you have any network and you connect to the, to the Internet, you're right there. You're at risk. So I, I would say you're almost at more risk just from having a cheap router <laughs> because 
those aren't as secure as a business class router. Mm -hmm. But now, of course, this setup is only two computers in the office. I, I more than likely, unless they needed some kind of VPN connections, I wouldn't have a watch guard there either for two computers. Um, I would go, and it doesn't, from the next part, uh, it doesn't sound like he's running any services. And so the, there's no server I'm, is what I'm getting at in this setup. So a, a D-Link or a home consumer router is probably what I'd put there as well for two computers. Now with that, you can't do certain things. So you have to change, if you want it to be 3399 for the RDP port, you've got to put that into the router port forwarding. You've got to change the listening port on the computer. Um, some routers have the ability to say, I want to connect to 3399 from outside, but then the router diverts it back to 3389. So you don't have to worry about changing the uh, listening port on the computer. Um, that's not that big a deal. Uh, it, but it is nice in a business that has more computers if you're doing this to not have to go visit the or connect to the registry, edit it, and don't forget when you change the listening port, you've got to add that port in the firewall, in the Windows firewall. Right. Because this, it, it might have the check mark for remote desktop, but that's 3389. Right, guys. Uh, put whatever port you change it to and also yeah. add that. You know, and security is a big thing. I mean, if you go to school for a security, just solely in IT, I mean, you know the various subjects that that can't be covered. Um, some folks, so some corporations use Undrop bots. Again, you put Undrop bots on your iPad, on your PC at uh, work and at home. Now, if you copy a confidential file, I mean, at the security risk there, there's FTP servers. I've seen people not ma not manage but not use servers correctly where they'll take folder A that Matt might, and his crew might have security locked down so only a few people can see it but they don't use that folder they'll use a public folder that everyone that can see then everyone can see each other's reviews and salaries or just data that you shouldn't see but I mean from a, from a security aspect there's tons of things to uh, worry about mm -hmm. oh yeah Right. And these small businesses, we, we don't want to bog them down. One, they don't want to pay for the expense to be secure. They don't want to go through the hassle to be secure. I just tell them for companies like this, I give them the option of the VPN. If they, it, it's, it's up to them if risk versus price. But I tell them as long as we have a good, strong password, more than likely you're going to be fine. And that's what we do for most all of our clients. Uh, and that, and that, it's correct because to this day, I mean, the most secure environments that we set up and from a, a global uh, or from a bigger networking, I still see piss poor passwords. And it's like the, all that hard work that everybody puts into into VPNs and you implement appliances. And when your password is your name and the, the number one or, you know, it, it just blows my mind. But anyways. Yeah. Well, the later version of Windows, and if you're on a domain, of course, you can set easily set password policies. Mm -hmm. It's nice to set that, um, especially now with newer Server 08 and even 2003, you can easily set a password policy. But it's a good thing to just set it from the beginning and just tell the customers, well, it's a built-in yes. feature of Windows. It, they, they require this not for security. Don't don't give them. I don't give anybody the choice of having weak passwords. And Matt, and I agree, and because it's. This is why, if you haven't been in this uh, a situation before, I went to a company once, and they had no policies whatsoever. So the president said, "Do whatever you have to do." So I used a group policy, made strong passwords. It had to be eight characters. I think I, I said, "Remember the, the last twelve passwords," and everybody threw a complete fit because they weren't used to this. So then, after all the people and griping, he made me lift. But the policy where it wouldn't do that or kind of relax it. But then I found out that people were doing, okay, pod nuts one, pod nuts two, pod nuts three. I mean, it's, it's it, it will drive you nuts. But like Matt's saying, if you can implement the behavior and best practice at the beginning of your initial uh, setup, I mean, you're good to go. But to f force people to change, it's kind of difficult at times. I don't know if you agree, agree with that, Matt. Well, I can tell you. The problem with weak passwords that I see most of the time, customers, 
mm-hmm. is somebody's passwords get stolen and now they start sending mail 